On behalf of New Song Church, welcome to our worship at home. If this is your first time worshiping with us, I would like to encourage you to set out for yourself some communion elements that you might break the bread with us and dip it in your cup in your own home, just as we will be doing in our own homes at the conclusion of this worship service. You might also want to light a candle to remind you of God's eternal presence in your life. In either case, if you need to take a few moments to prepare yourself, please do so at this time. The scriptural basis for our time together this evening comes to us from both the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, and from the New Testament. The first passage is from Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. God is speaking to the people. Now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. I set before you this day good and bad, life and death, Choose life. And the second passage comes to us from the Acts of the Apostles, the 10th chapter. These are the words of Paul describing the ministry of Jesus. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit, and Jesus went about doing good. May God bless these readings to our hearing. And I would encourage you now to join me in prayer. Dearest God, as I'm sure you know, we are what our grandparents would have called spoiled. We have been coddled and cared for as though we deserve our soft and cushy lives. Some of us, O oh God, have been so shallow as to claim our privileged lives to be a blessing. Remind us daily, O oh God, that wherever we are, that whoever we've become, we did not get here alone. We have benefited from the works, the teachings, and the examples of others. Remind us daily, O oh God, to constantly watch our thoughts, lest our thoughts lead us onto paths we should not travel. Remind us daily, O oh God, to follow Jesus. He didn't ask much of us mainly that we follow. Help us to live our daily lives in such a fashion that those we encounter are reminded that good people still pass through their lives. Help us to be good and to do good, following in the footsteps of Jesus. Amen. It has been said that as humans, we need to keep a careful watch over our thoughts because our thoughts lead to our words and our words move us into action and our actions then become habits and our habits determine our character and our character then determines our destiny. And so if we apply this not only just to our regular living, but also to life as Christians, then our thoughts, if we are thinking about what God would like us to do, then our thoughts will lead us to saying things that God would want us to say and acting like God would like us to act. And then we have a character that is more like God would like our character to be. And that leads us to a destiny, to a life in the presence of God. Now, we begin this Wednesday, on Ash Wednesday, this will be a different Lent for most of Christianity. But we should not allow our being isolated away from one another in a congregation to affect our own Lent our own approach to God, because Lent is to be a time of self-reflection. It is to be a time where we become more self-aware of who we are and where we improve on who we are so that we become more like the people God instructed us and wanted us to be. So imagine, if you will, that during the next six weeks, you are preparing yourself for a reunion 
with Jesus Christ. Now, if any of you have, and I'm sure you have, you know, uh, looked forward to like a 25-year high school class reunion. And those who are preparing for a 25-year high school reunion uh, go on a diet because they want to lose weight. They want to look good for the reunion. They, they may change their hairstyle. They may, may shape up their clothing, their, their appearance in that fashion. But they work at getting ready to meet again in the presence of their old friends. And so what I'd like for us all to do during this Lenten season is to spend some time preparing for our reunion with Jesus. Almost like we're preparing for a first date. We want to make ourselves look as good as possible and act as good as possible. Because we're going to meet a dinner with Jesus Christ. Now, in many ways, what I'm about to ask us to do is in keeping with the early Christian church. You see, I'm asking us as individuals to focus upon our self-reflection and our relationship with God between now and Easter. In the early church, it was tradition for people to fast completely for the 40 days prior to Easter. And according to what historians have told us, that many times on Easter morning, that people actually saw the risen Christ. But when you realize that, that, that those same people who said they saw the risen Christ on Easter, those same people had also gone without anything to eat for 40 days and 40 nights, and they may very possibly even have been hallucinating. So I'm not asking us to do something quite that drastic as the early church had done. But what I am asking us to do is to spend time making sure that we are the type of people God wanted us to do. Now, to do that, we have to be really honest with who we are. Maybe, maybe we are people who have been eating too much or drinking too much or using some substance, abusing some substance. So we need to change that. Maybe we have uh, some other behaviors that are just extremely unacceptable. Maybe we've been arguing with our spouse more than we really have any need to do or desire to do. Maybe we've been biting the heads off our kids. Maybe we have been almost like uh, a toxicity moving through our own work environment. Maybe we've just got a nasty attitude that we haven't been able to shake. And so we need to ask ourselves during this Lenten season, how do we change those actions? Because if we change the actions, if we change our thoughts, which then change our words, which change our actions, which change our habits, which change our destiny, then what that means is that by the time we come to Easter morning, we will be better people than we are right now. We will be more the type of people God wants us to be than we are right now. We will have better marriages than we have right now. We will be better parents or better children to our parents than we are right now. If we take this Lenten ser series, this Lenten season, seriously, we'll be better people when we come before Jesus on Easter morning. When God spoke to the people of Israel, Back in Deuteronomy, God was saying to the people, I set before you this day good and bad, life and death. And then God seems to plead to the people by saying, choose life. Think seriously about this. I set before you good and bad, life and death. Choose life. Choose good, because if you choose good, that leads to life. If you choose bad, that leads to death. God wants us to choose properly. 
Now, it's, it's not like God sets before us a test every day. It doesn't work like that. What it is, is that just living life sets before us a test every day where we have to choose between good and bad. Have you ever been cut off in traffic and you immediately scream out at the person who just cut you off and you may even have uh, flashed some kind of obscene gesture in their direction and how that made you feel for the next 10 to 15 minutes? Her. But in like fashion, have there been a couple times where that happened and the person sort of like, ah, sorry. And I just wave and went happily on my way. It's, it's the difference between whether you're going to flash that obscene gesture when somebody cuts you off or if you're going to give them a break, smile and wave. You've been there too in the wrong lane when you needed to be in the other lane. It's a choice that's set before us. Good, bad, life, death, choose life. Have you ever been walking up to a restaurant door and there is somebody else walking up to the restaurant door at the same time you are and, and you know that if you walk a little bit faster, you'll get there before they get there and then you'll get the table before they get their table because my gosh, what would happen if they get there first and they get the last table? But then you're walking up to that door. It's, that's a test that life has set for you. Good and bad life. Are you going to open the door and hold it for the other person and let them go in and maybe they get the last table that's available? Or are you going to push them out of the way? I got here first. I set before you this day, good and bad, life and death. Choose life. I remember seeing more than once when somebody would have bought a two scoop ice cream cone for a child and the child wanted the two scoops. The parent only wanted them to have one scoop. But the child turns and the top scoop slides off the cone. If you're the adult, what are you going to do? Are you going to yell at the kid? You clumsy, I told you not to get two scoops. See what you've done, you've cost me all this. Or are you going to laugh? Pat the kid on the back and say, wow, that one got away from you, did it? I sit before you this day, good and bad, life and death. Choose life. You know, God not only gave us that direction, but that's how Jesus lived his life. When Jesus was, was, was passing through a village and he saw a woman, an adulterous woman on the ground, ready to be stoned to death, he could have walked on by. But he chose to intervene. Let whoever is without sin cast the first stone. And then the woman was told, go on home and sin no more. He chose between life and death. Remember when Jesus saw people who were starving and they were right next to a cornfield? But they didn't go in and get corn to eat because it was the Sabbath. He could have just walked on by. 
But instead, he walked out in the cornfield and started picking corn so that they could have something to eat. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we know that we encounter on a daily, on an hourly basis, opportunities to do good or to do bad. Help us to make the right choices, O oh God, that we might follow a path that draws us ever closer to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we approach the communion table this evening, I'm reminded of a, of a story from several decades ago. There's this man named Joe. Joe was, um, was working uh, in uh, the higher levels of a Fortune 500 company. They had gathered for their weekly briefing where the CEO explained to the staff exactly where they were on different projects and, and what, the, what the, the, the force and the focus had to be for the coming week. And it was during one of those meetings where the CEO announced that they had lost a, a million dollar contract. And his explanation for it was, well, one of our people made a mistake. Let's just leave it at that. But everybody knew who that one person was. It was Joe. The whole contract was on Joe's shoulders, and they'd lost it. When the meeting was over, Joe went back to his office, took out a, a, a box and began packing up his things because he knew, he knew, you don't, you don't lose a million dollar contract with this company and stay employed. While he was packing up his belongings, the door to his office opened, the CEO walked in, the, the CEO closed the door behind him, and he asked Joe, what are you doing? Joe said, I thought it would be better for me if I resigned before I got fired. And the CEO responded by saying, you can't quit. Joe had a questioning look on his face. And the CEO said, I just spent $1 million training you. You can't quit. Get back to work. Sometimes when I make a big mistake, I think back to all the energy that God has spent training me molding me. Maybe you felt that way as well. But God's put a lot of energy into us and God isn't through with us yet. Let's meet at the table. Remember with me, if you will, the night in which Jesus was betrayed. Remember how he took the bread and how having blessed and broken it, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in like fashion, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup. And having given thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Drink ye all of this. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ that I invite us all to partake of the elements. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah.